I'm Mia Zachary, and you are listening to Elemental Abundance. So, I'm here in... You're actually watching Elemental Abundance. Oh, uh, well, actually, you're, you're watching, but some of you might be listening as well. I'm getting utterly confused, because it's late at night in the village, <laughs> <laughs> and we are... I am here with my two favorite people in the whole wide world, my universal playmates. <laughs> My kite string and guide, Renee Canali, and my soulmate and mentor, Glenn Garns. And we've been talking about struggle. And the kind of day that I've had today was nothing but struggle. <laughs> um, I kind of, you know, because of the way my mind works, I wanted to get up and do certain things and I wanted to come to work and I was going to get A, B, and C done. And then, you know, I was going to go out with friends and, you know, just. That's what I wanted to do today, and yet all day long, I have found myself struggling. Struggling to keep up, struggling to stay focused, struggling to get things done, uh, struggling to be happy. I've actually lost my cool a couple times today. Glenn might say more than a couple times, but that's all right. I um, counted a few. <laughs> 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 and the reason for this is that struggle is actually a perception. The reason we get frustrated and the reason that we struggle sometimes is that the way that we want things, the way that we see things, the way that we see things going, the way that we have things planned out is not the way that they actually are. So when that happens, what can we do? And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Very good. I like this topic. I'm glad. I think that the entire Elemental Abundance show should just be about the topic of struggle and how it's not really a struggle. I don't know. Maybe that's some... Is that another episode? That is another episode. That's all right. We can make it this episode. <laughs> it is now, now this Now, you talk episode. about whatever you want. No, no. It's just... I don't... <laughs> no, so, so, I mean, that, that's my theory. And the fact that we love each other and we're friends and family and universal playmates doesn't mean we have to have the same opinion. So... I think that struggle is a perception. I caused my own issues today. I caused my own struggle because the way I wanted things is not the way that they were. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, and I guess I would look at it a little bit differently. That's why you're, you're here. You're, well, I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you're of the opinion that that's why I'm here, that's good with me. I'm not going to go against that flow. <laughs> but as long as we're talking about going against the flow, I wanted to make the point that we perceive struggle as being present anytime something goes differently than what we in our minds had set out for ourselves. So again, it's only because we have a specific way of viewing how something should happen that it becomes disappointing when it doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. So for example, you got up this morning with a specific agenda of what you thought needed to be done today in order for you to have or experience happiness. Yep. And when you got here, everything but that happened. Yep. And you chose <laughs> To look at that as a bad thing. But if you look at what you did instead of what you set out to do, it actually was just as productive, if not more productive, than what you set in your mind, what your intentions were for the day. So doesn't that make her point? It's a perception. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that's my point is that, you know, people get up in the morning and they have a preconceived notion about how the day ought to go. As if they are going to be perfect in deciding, you know, it, it's not like God when he said, let there be light and let there be water and let there be all these other things. You know, we're not quite that evolved yet in the ability to dictate how stuff is going to roll out in the day. But the point I'm trying to make is that if you look at what most people's attitude is about change or things that are different or something, because because the changes that occurred in your day are the same as what, we, what we've talked about previously about something being familiar. If you've convinced yourself that this is what you want to do today, that becomes familiar, right. that becomes comfortable, which by definition means anything that changes that becomes unfamiliar, uncomfortable, and therefore the struggle begins. Yep. So it's totally a matter of how you see changes in your schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look back at what you did during the course of the day today and all those things were important, productive, helpful, enjoyable, 
and yet you struggled with them because it wasn't what you thought was going to happen today. Exactly. Expectation. I'm hoping <coughs> to one day come into the office and actually do what I thought I was going to do. <laughs> you know, actually, I don't care. I don't really, it doesn't matter to me. I know that whatever I'm getting done is, is what's supposed to be done at the time. Well, and that's been one of the great and wonderful challenges about being in business partners with you is that I used to think that I was flexible. I used to think that, you know, I was the kind of person, I was impulsive and spontaneous and all these other things. And then I started working with Glenn. <laughs> and I discovered that I need structure. <laughs> I need boundaries. <laughs> I need schedules. I need agendas. I need deadlines. <laughs> so you're going to be a little upset with me. I'm going to have to put this down because I know I can't have that on there while we're <laughs> on the set. <laughs> But uh, my little <laughs> refiller <laughs> bottle here, <laughs> my, I, this is my water Secrets. and this is, this is my secret <laughs> bottle over here. Welcome behind the scenes of <laughs> Elemental Abundance. <laughs> so you're going to be a little disappointed when we finish the show today because I'm going to ask you to entertain the possibility of making a change in tomorrow's schedule that we haven't even gotten to yet. So we're going to so test the theory yeah, of perception. Yeah, so, and, and I'll be honest, for the sake of those people listening and watching, Glenn's going to propose this change to a schedule that is already set, and I already have it in my mind that I need to prepare for this, 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 and this tomorrow. And I am going to struggle. I'm being honest. I am human. I don't claim in any way, shape, or form to be an expert or a master at using the universal laws to create a life I love. So I am going to struggle when he tells me about this change. I'm going to struggle and you know, because it's like, wait, wait, wait. This isn't what I thought. This isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I'd planned for. But the difference between me right now in this moment and me heck, six, nine months ago is I'm going to struggle for probably a microsecond and then I'm going to go with the flow as opposed to mm. getting upset and stomping my feet and going, but I wanted it this way. So bring it. All right. I'm going to, mm. I'm going to, we'll remember, we're going to play this one back. Okay. <laughs> I tell you what the change in schedule is going to be. Okay. Fair but, enough. But think fair about enough. what you just said though. You just, you just made a statement that is very similar to the statement that a lot of people make to themselves. Their self-speak, their self-talk. I am going to struggle with this. Now you said I'm going to struggle with it for a <coughs> nanosecond, but you still made the choice to struggle with it. Yeah. You could have said, Glenn's going to propose a change to my schedule, and I'm going to objectively entertain it and embrace it. That is not my language, but okay. I know it's not your language, <laughs> yeah. but it could be your language. You choose not to make that your language. You choose not to make that your mindset or your approach to being to encountering changes in your in your course, as you will. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, Renee, let me ask you. Is <laughs> I'm not going to do your stuff tomorrow. No, 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 no. I'm not going to ask you that. I'm not going to ask you that. What I am going to ask is if you can help me and maybe somebody else who's listening to understand the difference between self-speak and choosing to struggle versus acknowledging I know my personality, I know how I tend to handle things, but I've got a much shorter... Uh, what, what's the word I want to use? Uh, period I can, of disappointment. Yeah, I, I've got a much, much shorter period of disappointment now. So what's the difference between self-speak and acknowledgement? To me, ready? I'm ready. <laughs> 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 it's really where you decide in that instant to position yourself. Whether you're going to position yourself on the side of impossible and I can't and life has to be hard because it ha has been or on the other side which is the, this is the line of possibility so it's either impossible or it's possible mm -hmm. and possible is I can look at something different I can have different expectations I can just observe step back, I don't have to engage at this moment. So the self-speak is what we're familiar with. It's, you know, unfortunately, a lot of us are conditioned to kind of beat ourselves up because our country has been through so much in the last couple hundred years that 
we are, s everybody, you know, everything has to come with a price. Everything has to come with a price. But people have, over the last 50 or 60, maybe even 100 years, started to understand it doesn't have to be that way sometimes. And so for me, that's the difference, is do you want to keep telling yourself the scary bedtime story? Or do you want to use your imagination in such a way to open up another door to a world that you haven't yet experienced to the full extent that you can. I like what she said. I about like what she said. <laughs> well, I liked it first, so let okay. me finish what I was saying. I can't wait <laughs> to hear what I said. <laughs> no, you, you, you said that self-speak <coughs> is, <a con coughs> is, is a condition, well, I'm going to summarize it or paraphrase it. Self-speak is a conditioned response. And it's a rehearsed response. It's something that we have repeated in our heads, whether we picked it up because we've seen someone else do it and say it, societal conditioning, parental conditioning, or whatever. It becomes a conditioned response to a certain stimulus. And in this context, when something, we talked about you know, things being different, you set out to do this agenda and it turns differently. You could be on a road uh, going back and forth to work and there's a detour that you have to take because they're working on the road. And that becomes a struggle. So that's the same, that, that, that metaphor, that analogy works with whatever we're doing. But the point is, it is a conditioned response. Think about road rage. What is road rage? My every commute on I-95. But that's because you have <laughs> a conditioned, conditioned response, response to seeing yeah. people do stupid things. Yes, but now I say bless you instead of the other thing I used to say. Yeah, I know, because you can be arrested for some of the <laughs> things you used to say. <laughs> Especially when you roll your window down and you're saying to the cops and stuff like that. Yeah, well, well, one here's, time, here's one the time. <coughs> it is a conditioned response, and it is a choice that you make to give that response. And once you become aware that you're giving the response, that's where the choice comes. Do okay. I continue to give that response or is there a better response? Is there a response that would serve me better, make me feel better? I mean, you know, I used to experience road rage. I used to have a, a very short temper until I realized that it was eating the life out of me and that I didn't like that anymore. I was no longer comfortable, you know, even though it was familiar to me, I was no longer comfortable with that. And so I chose to step back and just let that be when people around me were doing and saying things that were normally something that would set my fuse off, gotcha. which could have been just about anything that I didn't want to hear. Right, you know. right. So um, you started to say something about, uh, you said something earlier that I really liked and could be a good advice for somebody. You said, in that moment, what is a choice that I can make? Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> could you expound on that a little bit because that's different than a choice that I should make. Yes. Yes. In order to get away from the conditioning, your brain needs something that is so different in that nanosecond that the subconscious and the conscious mind have to talk to each other. So all systems stop. And you go, you know, like, you start your conditioned response and you're like, I said I wasn't going to do that. I can, it's a pause, it's a break. The two systems have to sync up again. If they can't sync up, sync up again, you're not engaging in that conditioned response. And sometimes that's all it takes for you to start over again or start from a different place. So can I ask this uh, yeah, to yeah. demonstrate? So, Absolutely. So I want you, and, and the audience can certainly participate, is just take a deep breath in and then let it go. I was wondering how long you make me hold that breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And what's happening now? You started breathing again, but you were mm -hmm. breathing differently than what my conditions made you breathe. So when Glenn says, hey, we're not going to have this meeting tomorrow, I go. And you resist. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. And then you do that again. Ooh, now I'm lightheaded. <laughs> but you know what that forces you to do is to move from reaction to response. Yes. 
Can reaction, you explain? yeah, absolutely. Reaction is an emotional stimulus or re emotional response to a set of external stimulus. So if I smack you for making this change, you're going to react. <laughs> in an I'm going to respond. <laughs> no, no, no. You will have reacted, and I promise you that I will respond. And I may respond in kind, but it will be after giving thought to it. No, I'm but sorry. So, the, so no, the difference between a reaction a yeah. and a response is. Think of it this way: most animals react to an external stimulus when they're fe when they when they experience fear. They, the reaction is flight. Deliberative beings, human beings, are mostly capable of deliberation, even though we sometimes have an animalistic response to things, which is to immediately develop anger, jealousy, hate, rage, fear, whatever it is. We don't, we, even though we have the capacity to take a step back and look at a set of circumstances and make a more deliberate response to it. So again, this goes back to mindset. You have to make the conscious choice that you find a mechanism by which you catch yourself. Like Renee said, when something is about to happen that you're experiencing discomfort with, you have to learn how to catch yourself, take that deep breath in, which is giving you the chance to be deliberate in your response as opposed to an emotional reaction to what you just said, heard, or experienced. Okay, so what we need then is a pattern interrupt. Bingo. Yes. All right, so when Glenn says, um, hey, there's something that's going to be different on the schedule tomorrow. I need to go change. Woohoo! Yeah, as opposed <laughs> to smacking me. <laughs> the pattern interrupt Even can't be. Even if I say it in my head. <laughs> yeah, the pattern interrupt can't be to smack me or throw something at me. Okay. Yeah. So, very simply for people that are out there listening and they're going, okay, I'm not, like, <laughs> pattern interrupt, this is like so over. The reason I brought the breathing in is if you think about just establishing something like a breath over time, if you can use breathing right now, it helps, it, it puts a gap in if you think about it. It puts a gap between the reaction and the response. And the reason is this. Okay, okay. When you inhale, you do not immediately exhale. And when you exhale, you do not immediately start to breathing there is a very small gap in between. The space in between, okay. It's the space in between. And that's the pattern interrupt. So write this down because this might I end up writing. becoming Renee's next book. Ooh, okay. Seek the space in between. Great title. I charge extra for that. It's not exactly the title, but you're close. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, is that really? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, I didn't, no, I didn't know that that, are you really working on a book on that? Yep. Fantastic. Oh. I, got, I got several things. Well, let's step working. it up, please. I like that. I'd like to read I that like book that. myself. So, to kind of sum up where we are, um, a po possible summation of where we are, is that struggle really is just a perception. It's a mindset. It's, a, it's an attitude. And that attitude needs to be adjusted so that you are not reacting, you are responding to whatever is going on. So I, um, I was listening to Tony Robbins, I think, I think it was the Ultimate Edge CD, I can't remember. But one of the things that he said like always stuck with me because he says, see it as it is, not worse than it is. Mm. So in order to see it as it is, Glenn's about to change our agenda for tomorrow. Can we get That's off of that? Did we get another example? Okay, a different example. So, <laughs> um, I'm gonna get smacked. Okay, I'll give, so I'll give you another example. The dress that I'm wearing right now is not the dress that I was wearing this morning, which was just another way <laughs> that I struggled through my day. Um, and when I went to go get it, I took a complete wrong turn on Route 1, ended up all the way in Beltsville over by Banky's Gardeners. Oh, my. Yeah, I really that's went out of my That's not a bad realm. thing. You no, should no, have no, gone on in there. So, but that's, so, but that's, the, that's the thing. That was the seeing it as it is and not worse than it is. So when I realized where I was, I'm like, wow, aren't those flowers really pretty? <laughs> I got to turn around now <laughs> and go back the way I was going. There's your gap. That's right. There's the gap. Because normally you would have allowed that to have a spiraling effect that would have had you mad oh, at everyone else on the road. <laughs> Most of us. It's yeah. like, okay, I found myself. I'm going to turn around. Oh, man, he just cut me off. Why won't you let me in? Why don't yeah. you turn your blinker off? How come it's a red light? I've got to, and we go right back mm -hmm. to it. Noticing the flowers, that second or two of gratitude is the gap. 
it's that space in between. I love that. I it's love also that. a matter, and this is this is rather simplistic, but you're going to experience a variety of circumstances during your day. Yeah, we all do. Yeah, and being able to change the mindset is to understand from the beginning of the day that not everything that you're going to experience today has to be a major moment in history in a bad way. That's really how that's really have to how you have to look at it. I like that. I like that. So thank you both so much for being here with me for this conversation. I'm grateful for you, both of you. And so we'll see how long that lasts. That's going to last a long All time month because it's m gratitude it month. It is gratitude oh, month and I am go. grateful for not only my wonderful co-host but also for anybody who took time out of their day to listen to this. So the <coughs> final advice that we have for you is as they say in, in Great Britain, mind the gap. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Elemental Abundance. I'm Mia Zachary. I wish you luck. I wish you joy. And I wish you great success in all that you do. Until next time. <laughs>